Hey everybody, welcome to Premiere On Script video number 10. If you've been watching for the first nine videos, thanks for following along. I hope that this is helping you gain a good knowledge base of how to work with panels and scripting within Premiere. If this is your first movie you're watching, welcome. Today we're going to be covering an extremely important topic. We're going to be kind of, last week we talked about the panel side of things. We're going to bring it back to Extend Script and talk about importing files. And maybe I should have done this video earlier in the series because it really is a fundamental part of a lot of automated workflows. If you can just press a button, tell it what to import and have it perform a bunch of actions on those files, you know, uh, it can be really powerful to getting your project up and going quickly. So today we're going to talk about importing a single file. After that, we'll talk about importing multiple files. Then we'll talk about taking those files and importing them directly into one of your organized bins within Premiere. From there, we'll talk about specifically importing folders from your file system, including all the subfolders under those folders. And then we'll talk about how to import a folder without including the subfolders, if you want to target that for a specific reason. So let's go over here into an extend script. And this is going to be one of those videos where I'm just going to uncomment a bunch of code and we're going to walk through it. So in this first one, we're going to talk about importing just a single file, you know, down to the basics. So we'll click run and this is what's going to happen. It's going to come in here and I'm going to go to my blog folder and just import some random raw screen cap that I have uh, recorded. And the first thing that's going to uh, alert us just to show you what information is being passed to extend script is this path. And this is the file path uh, that the prompt is returning back to extend script. Now it's going to show another path. And this one looks a little more readable. It doesn't have the squiggly line at the beginning. It has the kind of standard file path format for a windows, which is C colon, you know, backslash, and then your whole file path. So that looks a lot cleaner. And then after we click that, it's going to import that file and pop us back into extend script. So let's walk through this code and what just happened there. And then we'll run it again to show it one more time. So first we declared a variable import single file. And then I set that to file dot open dialogue, import video file, just prompting us for which one we want to target. Then I created an array that I called the import array. Uh, and then I had it alert us those file paths. So you wouldn't include these in your code, but it's good to see what's being returned. So when I do file.open dialog up here, what's being returned is that kind of weird file path where if we run it again, you can see um, it has a squiggly line. Uh, the backslashes aren't forward slashes. If there's any spaces in the file names, we get this percent sign 20 before the next word starts. It's kind of this weird file path. And then we can format it to look a little bit cleaner with the use of this code. Uh, if we take the import single file variable up here, and we just add FS name to it. That's going to format it into a much more reasonable file path, which is good because we need that in order to put it into the import array. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the import array we declared right here. We're going to push the import single file dot FS name into that import array. And the reason we're doing this is when we call the next function on line 11, app.project.importfiles import array, you need to pass an array into this function in order for it to do anything. Kind of weird that it needs an array when you're just, you know, importing a single file, but this is good because then after this we can push more things into that array and import multiple files. So that is bare bones how to import just a single file. Now let's comment all this out and let's move on to the next one, which is going to be a little bit longer but we're going to import multiple files of all file types. So let's run this really quickly just to show you that it works. And in this folder, I have wave files. I have MP4s. I have dot move files. Um, we're just going to import a bunch of these all over the place and it's going to import them, you know, just nothing special import some files, right? Well, it's a little more tricky than the simple code that we had above just for importing a single file. So the first thing we need to do is take this little variable and if statement that you can find in the Adobe GitHub sample code, which is going to help us determine what type of operating system the script is running on. 
So first, let's talk about uh, this uh, import many files variable. Just like above, where we did a variable for import single file, here we're going to do import many files, file dialog, import files. But then there's two other variables that come into play down here. The first is a filter string. And this is going to tell the operating system that, tell that dialog box what type of file extensions we want to allow to be imported. So in order to do that, we come up here to this var filter string. And if you're running on a Mac, it's pretty easy. If you want to just let all files come in and not limit the, the file extension at all, then you just put two quotes uh, and then put that in the filter string and you're good to go. Now, if you have a Windows computer, you have to list uh, this text in there, which is going to say all files colon star period star. Now, this final argument, this true argument right here, is going to be telling this file open dialog if you want to allow multiple files, which for this, of course, we do. You could include all of this information up in um, this code up here where we're importing a single file, but there's no need to for that example. Down here we will. We're going to say that we do want to allow multiple files to be imported. And then once again, we're going to create an import array. So now we have our dialog box popping up. We select our files. The import array is created. And now we're going to get uh, an array of files coming as this var import many files variable. So now that this is an array, we just have to loop through it, add that fs name attribute onto the end of it before we push it into our import array, and then the rest uh, goes as we did above. So we'll just say that if import many files, you know, is a thing, uh, let's loop through it in a, in a simple for loop determined by import many files as length. And then for import array, say zero, we're going to do import many files, zero.fs name. So that's just going to place every single file path that's in the import many files array into the import array with that nice clean file path name that we had uh, developed earlier using fs name. Then after all of this, we are going to do app.project.importfiles import array one app project dot root item and zero. Now this looks a little different than the import files uh, function that we called earlier as well. Well, it does, but that's because once again, this was really simple. Let's talk about what each of these means. So the first is just as above. We're gonna put in the import array of file paths that we want Premiere to import. The second one is going to be a binary value of whether or not you want to suppress any warning boxes that may come up. And I'm never trying to see any warning boxes about stuff coming up, so we're going to suppress those warnings by putting this as a 1. If you want to see those warnings, list it out as a 0. Next, we're going to list app.project.rootitem, and this is going to be the index path within Premiere that you want these files to land in. So if I wanted to import these directly into a bin, I would target the index of that bin right here, and it'll drop those in there. And then the final is another binary, and it's going to be asking us if we want to import these as stills. And in this case, we don't want to do that because we're importing a bunch of different files, well, file types and their movies, and we don't want to do that. So you can play around with that by yourself, but that's what each one of these four arguments means. So once again, if we run it, you'll see that we can just import all of this stuff, no matter what the file type is. Uh, it's probably going to take a little bit longer. It's going to import them into Premiere, and there we go. There they all are in there. So we're just going to delete all of those and, and we're going to create a bin for this next one. So we'll call it, create a bin and call it example, if I can spell right. And then pop back over to extend script. And that's how you import multiple files of all types. But we're going to comment that out and move down to import multiple files of one type into a specific bin. So here we are going to um, do the same thing we did above. We're going to do file open dialog, just prompt the user to import files. And here I'm not going to go through the whole filter string if statement because I know that I'm working on a Windows computer. And this is great if you're distributing your panel or your scripts out to you know, multiple file systems. And you should always write your code so that you're prepared for that. 
But if I'm just writing a script just for myself right here, I'm just going to put in what I know I need uh, the filter string to be. So I'm going to put all files that are dot move as a string right here so that I can only import dot move files. And then I'll set this to true so that I can import multiple. The rest is going to be all the same as above. We're going to make the import array. Uh, if import many files is a thing, we are going to do the loop, add FS name, and push it into import array. And then we come down here to the import files. And this is going to be all the same as the last one except for one change. We have the import array array. We set this to one. And here's where we change it. We are, instead of just importing to app.project.rootitem, we're going to pull this into app.project.rootitem.children0 because right now in Premiere, there's only one item, and it's this folder, and it's going to be at index 0. So after that, we put 0, and it's going to look something like this. Uh, you can see right down here that I can now import all files as long as they are a dot .move. And I can click on these, and I can click on these to import them, but all those WAV files that I have in that raw screen cap folder that I've been uh, playing around with earlier are not there because uh, this dialog box is limiting what we can import. So let's just import uh, these files right here. Oh, I can hit the shift button. And we'll import those four files. And now... Looks like nothing happened, but if we scroll down the example folder, they're all in there. And this is really nice because as you're importing a bunch of files, uh, you can kind of filter them and make it so that, you know, your MP4s are going in this folder and your audio files are going in that folder and makes it really great for a workflow. So next up, let's go into importing entire folders with subfolders. So with this, it's going to get a little different because before we were creating a variable and setting it to file.opendialog here, we're going to go variable import folder and set it to folder select dialog and then just prompt the user to choose the folder to import. Now, once we have that import folder file path selected uh, from this prompt, we are going to do variable import files and then call that import folder and run the function get files, which is going to return us an array of all the file paths that are within that folder. So let's just run this just for an example. And uh, it's going to look a little different. We're going to come in here and I'm going to go to my blog. And I have all these uh, things. I'll go to my final movies and I also store some thumbnails in there. We'll click import that, and this is what it's returning with the import folder .get files to the import files uh, variable. So you can see my alerts right there. It looks like those squiggly lines and the, the weird formats, but it's an array, just like we would expect with an MP4 here um, and a bunch of MP4s along the way. But then at the very end, you can see that we get a, um, a folder because it's just thumbnails with no... Uh, dot anything, no extension on the end of there. So that's what it looks like, and then it imports everything in. And it looks something like this. So it imports everything that was in that one folder, including the subfolder that was in that folder. So, you know, we were here, we were just looking at the alert for an example, uh, but it's all the same from here. We create that import array, we loop through the import files array. We add the FS name on and push it to the import array. And then down here, we run the exact same thing where we are importing just the import array directly to the root of the project. Now, one thing you might run into is that you want to import these files, but you only want to import certain files, but without selecting them. So instead of up in this example where we were limiting the amount of files that we wanted to import to only .move files. Maybe you want to import a bunch of files, but exclude audio files or exclude some type of file. Maybe you want to target a folder and exclude all of the subfolders. Well, there's a really easy way to do that if we think about it, and it's just limiting the types of files that we're going to push through to that import array that we keep declaring. 
So here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say folder select dialog, choose a folder to import. It's going to go and get those files. But where we're going to change the code up to limit it to not import the subfolders is we're going to go for uh, the length of import files. Let's loop through it. And then we're going to say if uh, the import files file path to a string, because right now it's coming in as a file path and let's change it into a string. If in that string, the index of period occurs and that is greater than negative one, meaning it exists anywhere in that file path, then we are going to add it to the import array. However, you see what's happening here is it's going to be looping through that array that we have right here where we got the files and it's going to come across if we do that same example of my final movies folder, it's going to come across the thumbnails folder, which we have in there. And it's going to see that the thumbnails folder doesn't have a period, an extension on it, because it's just a folder. And so it's not going to add it to the import array. So then when we come down here, we run the import files function, and you'll see that it did not import thumbnails. This was already there. Let's run it one more time just to show you that it does in fact work. We'll come in here, documents, blog, final movies. And there you go. You have limited uh, not importing the subfolder into there. So think about how you can use this. You can uh, do if the index is of say dot mp4 and we only want to import mp4s, you could do that. Or you could add, you know, copy and paste all this and say, you know, if it's an MP4 or it's a wave, add it to there, but any other files we don't want. It's just a really easy way to go through the files that you're selecting within a folder and filter out the results that you want to get. So I hope you feel ready to import whatever you need into your Premiere project now. It's a really core idea to automating your workflows. So I hope that this covered everything you need. If it didn't, please make a comment under this video and I will try to respond to you as quickly as I can. Thank you for watching and, you know, tune into the next one. Uh, next week, I think I'm going to start talking a little bit about accessing the active sequence that you currently have selected and maybe we'll get into dropping in clips, uh, muting audio, maybe we'll go into markers, something along that line. But we're going to start diving deeper into the active sequence and kind of doing more edits in the future. So tune in next time and thank you for watching.